Welcome back to renovating a Stuart 5A twin steam engine. This is part six, and honest, it is the last bit of painting. Uh, I think, yes it is, it's the last bit of painting. And what I'm doing at the moment is refitting the nuts and lock nuts to the studs that hold the standards to the bed plates. This is quite a slow process, and I usually drop them on the floor a couple of times, but I get there in the end. In a previous episode, I mentioned that I'm only taking the nuts and lock nuts off one side of the standards in order to ensure that everything remained in alignment. So these are what I'm currently putting back. And as soon as these nuts and lock nuts are back in position, I will turn the engine round and remove the ones at the other side. Because if you remember, I could not paint the other side fully because the nuts and lock nuts were in place and I didn't want to get paint all over them. And as usual, a quick word of caution. These are quarter inch studs with quarter inch nuts on them, which does not give you free rein to put loads of pressure on them and over tighten them. Two things may happen. The worst case scenario is you will crack the casting, and the next worst case scenario is you may shear off the stud itself. I'm now turning the engine around to look at the other side, and I'm removing the nuts, and again multitasking, one with each finger. I was going to say this is very good practice for screwing down the lid on your wife's coffin, but as I got told off recently by a viewer for being disrespectful to my wife, I'd better not say that. Instead I will say, and this is the last nut about to come off. Around the base of where the nuts have been, there's a little bit of paint residue. I did scrape this off before I finished the final painting. And here you see me finishing the final painting. Well almost, these pieces still need painting. The good thing about it is they're going to be a different colour. These are going to be black. They are, of course, the two pieces of shaped steel for the outer cylinder cladding. Before I do any painting on these pieces, I have to clean them up thoroughly. Here I'm using cellulose thinners, as usual, in a very well-ventilated area, may I say. That is quite important. And I give them a really good scrub down with this old paintbrush to get rid of every trace of any grease. A quick word of caution. It's really better to put the cellulose thinners in a metal container. Do not, under any circumstances, put them in a plastic container. The cellulose thinners will try its best to dissolve the plastic, and that would be really messy as you would get dissolved plastic and cellulose thinners all over your bench. Now, I know this looks like a plastic container, but it isn't. This is a polythene container, and is not affected in any way by the cellulose thinners. Once the two pieces of cladding sheet have been thoroughly cleaned with the cellulose thinners, it's time to roughen them up a bit. I'm using 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper for this, and I'm using it dry. This puts lots of tiny scratches on the outside surface, which makes a key for the paint that's going to be going on there. If you don't do this, you stand the chance of the paint flaking off. You can use more coarse sandpaper than 400 grit, but this seems to work fine for me. If you do use very coarse sandpaper, you do stand a chance of the deep scratches made by this sandpaper showing through after it's had one or two coats of spray paint. Did I hear that right? Did I just say spray paint? Yes, spray paint. Normally, I would use a small paintbrush and a synthetic enamel paint, but for things like this, spray paint does look better. So after they've been roughed up with the sandpaper, it's time to give them a coat of red primer. I much prefer to spray things with paint outside. I have actually done it in the workshop from time to time, but it does leave an overspray residue on all my equipment, which I don't like. And I think it's better for your health to do it outside anyway. I would only consider spraying indoors if it was raining very heavily outdoors. What you do have to watch if it's raining or if it's very humid and damp is something called bloom. You get your nice finishing coat on and it goes really weird as the paint appears to react with the damp atmosphere. I'm sure some experts out there will illuminate me on this, and I won't argue with it, because I know very little about spray painting. I generally get a good finish, and I always use this stop and start method, that way I don't seem to get any runs. And the paint doesn't fall off, so I presume I'm doing something right. What I have figured out with spray painting, and not by watching YouTube videos, just by doing it over the years, is that lots of thin coats are much better than one thick coat and you always need to leave an adequate time for the primer to dry before applying the top coat. So while the red primer on the cylinder cladding is drying, under the safety of my up and over garage door to keep the sun off the parts, it's not a good idea to get too much sun on paint, otherwise you may see it bubble as it dries. What I'm doing at the moment is painting the main bearing top caps. Unfortunately, there are four of these to do. I'm not removing them, 
They're a nice tight fit, I don't want to disturb them, so I will paint around the studs, and even before the paint is dry, I'm refitting the nuts. It's actually a good idea to do this, because when the paint is dry, it's not really very hard, and as you tighten down the nuts, unless there's a washer there, it generally rooks up the paint a little bit. So you may as well put them on while the paint is wet, that way the paint just settles back around the nut. As I said earlier, there are four of these to do. Normally on an engine of this type, a standard big twin, you would have three, you'd have a centre main bearing, and two outer ones. You may notice I do get the odd spot of green paint on things. This will be cleaned off before the engine is finished. There's a little bit there, if I look at it, on the crank web. Nobody's perfect, and it's very easy to remove. To remove the paint, I will just use a small cloth with some cellulose thinners on it and then go over the entire engine where I've got some British Railways green paint where it does not need to be. One viewer wrote in and said, it looks like British racing green, and yes it probably does, it's a similar shade of green I do believe, very similar to Brunswick green that I painted my Land Rover in. I'm a little confused though, and if anybody can help on this, it will clear something up. A certain type of green paint that was very popular for painting steam engines, particularly engines in mills, was called olive drab. Now what's that all about? Why would you call a paint olive drab? Unless it was inadvertently named after the wife of the inventor of the paint, whose name was coincidentally olive. Right, that's enough of that before someone writes in. I'm outside again with my spray paint. This time it's black paint. And I get my paint from a company called Auto Paint Northern in the north of England. And it seems to be very good paint. This is going on very well indeed. It's satin black, which reminds me, with all this black paint, I think it's time I went inside. It's very warm out here, so I think I'll go inside and shut myself in a dark room. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.